This video is brought to you by Rocket Money and Babbel. More on them after the reaction, people. Citizens of the Reject Nation, it is time to learn who our cousin Vinny is. Are you excited, Aaron? I am so excited. I'm excited to see who our mutual cousin is because we know very little about Vinny and we're about to find out together. Please let us know in the comments below what you think of this fine film that we have heard a lot about but know very little about going into this fine film itself. Please leave a like so we know that you enjoyed this experience so we know to do more of these. And please let, let us, us know, know what else you want us to watch and subscribe and hit that notification bell so when we watch those things you very much want us to watch, you are notified of us watching them. It's all very intuitive. And we'd also like to thank Prepper who made this very video possible. Prepping, editing, shaping, curating the very experience you're watching right now today. Also, if you'd like the full experience of us watching it top to bottom, beginning to end with our resting watching faces, Head on over to Patreon where you can check out the full-length watch log and sync up with your own copy at home. And there's also exclusive watch logs over at Patreon where you can watch things that John and Greg watch exclusively over there for those super, super sexy, sexy rejects. Reject. And without further ado, it is time to dive in to my cousin, Vinny. Vibes immaculate. <laughs> Immediate off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pesci, we knew. Okay. Rambaccio. Ah! Is that Rambaccio? Is Rambaccio. That? Oh, shit, it is. As his name appears. <laughs> Can't confirm. <laughs> Rambaccio. He's canon. <laughs> oh, man. He is so young forever. Oh, man. He doesn't look much older now. This is a great skincare routine. It's immaculate. <laughs> when you master your chi with karate, you preserve <laughs> yourself. <laughs> 91. All right. So this is an early 90s film. Okay. Okay. 91 would have been, what, 33 years ago? Yeah. I would have been negative four years so old. so good. Negative four. Looking great. <laughs> yeah. Doing the work. <laughs> I love I'd want to visit places with free horse manure. That's just a daunting <laughs> final destination. <laughs> I just final destination every time I see a logging truck. I just cannot drive behind one. No, hell no. Also, big rids. Like, driving next to them freaks me out. It is so pretty wherever they're filming. Less pretty now. A little different. <laughs> the South! <laughs> Way down South. <laughs> I do miss porches, though. Yeah, right? Where do Middle you even America? put a rocking chair in L.A.? In the backyard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> in the mud? In the mud. She <laughs> <laughs> gets stuck. Oh, the old sack of suits. <laughs> Here's some for 37 cents. Here's some for 32. The good old days. Mm, inflation commentary. <laughs> Don't they have any generics here? I think this is the generic. I never heard of that brand. Maybe we should get this one. Maybe it's worth a penny. Huh? Yeah, you're paying for advertising. <laughs> Please, no more tuna, okay? It's got protein. We need protein. Beans are protein. Beans make you fart. We got a convertible. But they're good for your heart. <laughs> the accent's immaculate. One burrito and one large slush. That's not a large. You barely put anything in there. $21.67. Can you fill this up? Do you recognize that actor? He looks so familiar, yeah. but I cannot. And especially in this era, the early mid nineties, can't place him though. And yeah. I'm sure he's in stuff now that we've said it, but look, I forgot to pay for this. He could have gotten caught. What if somebody saw? The laws are medieval down here. You know what the minimum age for execution is in Alabama? What, 16? 10. <laughs> There's a cop behind us. A cop? There's nothing to worry about, right? There might be. Just trust Ralph Macchio. He has a mustache. He knows what he's doing. A very trustworthy mustache. <laughs> we don't have any money for bail. We don't need money for bail. Nothing's happened. Now, just relax. Nothing. We're getting pulled over, aren't we? You, you stole something, didn't please, you? You're finished. Please. Shut up, all right? Jesus. Oh, damn. Jesus. <laughs> I agree, Ralph Macchio. <laughs> up! Now put your hands on top of your head and get out of the car. Is this over a can of tuna? I... One, it's got to be like a looks like other people. Oh, totally. Three and five. Wow. Ridiculous. All this over a can of tuna. Oh. Oh, this guy. Oh, is he from? Lots. Nothing I could name, but like he's that guy. <laughs> he's one of those actors. Yeah, I've seen him. You'll hear his voice and immediately. Okay. 
Hello, Bill. I'm Sheriff Farley. Hi. Oh, it's going to kill me. So familiar. Do you know why you're here? Yeah, I do. Why are you here? I'm sorry. It was a stupid thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> you're willing to waive that right? Yes. I'm willing to cooperate fully. I'll sign a statement or whatever makes this whole thing easier. <laughs> oh, no. No, don't do that. Did he help you plan it? No. I mean, it wasn't planned out. You know, just like, you know, it just happened. Oh, God. Did Stan try to stop you at any time? No. Why, is that a big deal? Aiden and abetting. What is that, a major thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> an accessory? Are you guys kidding? An accessory? I didn't help. I didn't plan it. You didn't try to stop it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Why didn't you get out? Call the police then. <laughs> He's my friend. Oh, no. No. What's going to happen to Bill? Nothing. Unless he's convicted. <laughs> of course, if he is, we're going to run enough electricity through him to light up Birmingham. That's oh, angle. there's been a few. <laughs> what about the tuna fish? Then I forgot about the can of tuna fish, and then we left. Did he catch you with tuna fish? Is that how it started? No, he didn't say anything. But he knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> The he paid for the groceries. Yeah. Okay, now I can't unsee them. <laughs> They're severe. Yeah, for real, though. When did you shoot him? What? At what point did you shoot the clerk? I shot the clerk. Yes, when did you shoot him? I shot the clerk. <laughs> we need you out here. I'm in the middle of a damn confession here. Oh, no. Twice he said it. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Now you got up. There you go. Oh, no. Do you know what this is all about? Yeah, they're f***ing with us. You think we're being booked for shoplifting, huh? No, no. you're being booked for shoplifting. I'm being booked for accessory to shoplifting. <laughs> Stan, I'm being booked for murder. And you're being booked for accessory to murder. It's time to make your phone call. Is that Nick Offerman? Almost. <laughs> it's Rick Offerman. <laughs> you need to call an attorney, a great attorney. Do you know any great attorneys? No. I'm calling my mother. I thought we were about to get a name. It, we're in Wazoo. It's in Beecham County, Alabama, Ma. We've been arrested. Ma, Ma, please. Ma, please. First of all, we didn't do it, all right? Murder. <laughs> it must look like the guys who did it. I don't know what it Tell is. Tell them what we but think is happening. What we, we think is happening. Shut up. shut up. We think they're trying to set us up as patsies, Ma. You know how corrupt it is down here? <laughs> they're, here. they're in bread. They sleep with their sisters. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we gotta get an attorney and it's gonna cost a lot of money how much would an attorney cost a decent one fifty a hundred thousand dollars inflation well that's a great idea that's a great idea you think he'll do it what? we got an attorney in the family great who my cousin Vinny. yeah, yeah. It. with the intro <laughs> oh i love that cut so much that was, that was awesome. fantastic oh a city lawyer in the south <laughs> Where is he from? <laughs> oh, I know her. It's the Grandma and Family Matters. Oh, was it? Yeah. Right Them boots, though. Pesci. Yeah. See, I know him from Lethal Weapon, and more recently I saw the Goodfellas for the first time. Oh, like, man. I saw Goodfellas for the first time, so I'm really curious what next phase Pesci is for me, because I've always so been like good. Leo Getz is Pesci. <sighs> Oh, Marissa Tomei's hair is its own character. You stick out like a sore thumb around here. Me? What about you? I fit in better than you. At least I'm wearing cowboy boots. <laughs> oh, yeah, you blend. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the Chinese food here is terrible. <laughs> I don't see anything out of whack under there. It feels like the wheels went out of balance right after we hit that mud. Nah, that's not it. I think you should put it on a rack and take a look. She's so fine. Yeah, God and that man. hair streak is so great. Oh, yeah. Now, see, down here, everybody gets stuck in the mud every now and then. Hey, we're famous for our mud. Famous for your mud? <laughs> How's your Chinese food? It's her top concern. They don't have Chinese restaurants around here. Gotta let everybody know you're a tourist. What are you, a f***ing world traveler? Well, their accents <laughs> are amazing. They're so good. 1992 Marissa Tomei for Harley Quinn. I like that. I so like I that want. a lot. <laughs> 1992 Ralph Macchio for Robin. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what's condemned this morning. 
a corrections facility. <laughs> Alternative universe Joe Pesci for Penguin. Oh, <laughs> yes. 100%. That would be so dope. He's a great, like, Tim Drake Robin. I, I totally could totally see, see that. 100%. You know what happens in these places? And sometimes there's a big guy named Bubba no one wants to tangle with. And he'll protect you. But then you have to become a slave and do whatever he wants. There's only the two of us here. What about those cots? <laughs> I mean, what if they put somebody else in here? Stan. Shut up. <laughs> I miss, I miss when scores were playful. Yeah, like The right? playfulness of the score is great. Like Dutch Angles, a really synthy score. We got somebody for you. You must be Stan. How you doing? <laughs> Why'd they bring you in here? Well, I just got in. I asked where the new guys were, and they brought me right in. Hey, sleeping, huh? Cute little guy. <laughs> <laughs> if I was in your situation, I'd want to get through this whole thing as quickly and with as little pain as possible so you know let's try our best to make it a simple in and out procedure ah. <laughs> amazing uh. we spend a couple of minutes together you know to get acquainted before we uh, you know before we get to it oh the dialogue is so good in these moments this movie's use of misunderstandings is so funny three for three so far yeah oh wow you know, what are your alternatives? <laughs> <laughs> to what, to you? I don't know. Death? It's either me or them. You're getting <laughs> fucked one way or the other. Ah, <laughs> no! <laughs> don't worry, I'm gonna help you. Yes. Oh my god! Jeez, but I think a modicum of gratitude would not be out of line here. You think I should be grateful? Yeah. I mean, it's your ass, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should be down on your <laughs> knees. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I didn't know it was such an honor to get a visit from you. Hey, I'm doing a favor here, you know. You're getting me for nothing, you little <laughs> That's one hell of an ego you've got. <laughs> what the f is your problem? Oh, my God. Hey, Billy. Hey, Billy. Go hey, Billy. Billy. Billy bag of donuts. How are you? Oh, it's <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, have you had any murder cases before? None. This would be my first. What kind of cases have you had? Assault and battery, armed robbery, you know. Nope. Nothing like that either. Mm. What kind of law do you practice? Well, up till now, uh, personal injury. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, this would be my first foray into the trial process. I haven't had to go to court yet. Knock on wood. How long have you been practicing? Almost six weeks. <laughs> oh, no. Man, you graduated from law school six years ago. What have you been doing since? Oh, no. Studying for the bar. Six years? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of studying. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pass my first time out. That's okay. He probably passed the second time, right? I'm afraid not. <laughs> Three times a charm? Not for me, it isn't. <laughs> oh, no. For me, six times was a charm. Oh, no. Uh... Do you have to wait a year, I wonder? Uh, maybe. Oh, no. Yeah, it's going to do great. It's going to be fine. <laughs> a little informal, aren't we? I was just uh, resting. Not wearing a coat or tie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just have a few questions. Okay, fire away, Judge. Where'd you go to law school? Brooklyn Academy of Law. Is that an accredited law school? Uh, yes. How long have you been practicing? Almost 16 years. <laughs> Any murder cases? Not so. Quite a few. Really. What was the outcome? Uh, you know, win some, lose some. You ever heard of the son of Sam? The fellow who received orders to kill from a dog, you defended him. Well, no, not exactly. I defended the first guy they arrested. He was found innocent and set free. They caught the real guy. You're welcome. <laughs> you being from New York and all might have the impression that law is practiced with a certain degree of informality down here. It isn't. <laughs> when it comes to procedure, Man, I advise you, sir, when you come into my courtroom, you would know the letter of the law. I'll react harshly when you don't. You should. Don't think being from New York, you're going to get special treatment. I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so well cast. <clears throat> I expect you know this information when you come into my courtroom. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Fantastic. 
What a fun score. Yeah, it's such a bop. It's something you'd listen to at a big Cadillac. Yeah, totally. Like every time they show the car to the music, well, correct. <laughs> it's the Cadillac theme song. It really is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A train? Oh, it's a oh, factory. Wow. Another world. <laughs> She's got full on Lady Gaga vibes in that outfit. Oh, 100%. Them shoulder pads? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Carla DeVille, oh, though. Oh, man. What's the story with this oh. incredibly, remarkably loud whistle at 5 30 in the morning? <laughs> It's a steam whistle over at the sawmill. Tell folks it's time to get up. <laughs> you can hear it for miles. <laughs> Breakfast? You think? <laughs> <laughs> Inflation. Oh, uh, also oh. the three item menu breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Just all lard based. <laughs> oh, God, that's so much lard. You guys down here hear about the ongoing cholesterol problem in the country. <laughs> Breakfast. Breakfast. What's what's this over here? It's a grits, boy. You never heard of grits? Sure. Come on now. Sure, I heard of grits. Not New York. <laughs> yeah, honey, you can try it. You first. <laughs> Don't climb on grits now. Grits are bomb. What is a grit, anyways? It's made out of corn. Them hominy grits. Hmm. <laughs> you ever had grits? I have. I got family in North Carolina, Virginia, and West Virginia. Okay. I have this whole world. Yeah. I'm more of a collard greens man between the southern food, but <laughs> I'll eat grits. All right, all right. Yeah, try them with shrimp. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, shrimp and grits. That's like uh, Louisiana right there. <laughs> this is a photo <laughs> moment. A New Yorker eating grits. Now, hush puppies, collard greens. Like, there's, there's southern food I miss, but grits is just kind of like part of a plate. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. It could be a dinner food or a breakfast food. Yeah, but like collard greens, I'll seek out. Right, right, right. That's a mustache. Oh, right there. that's beautiful. <laughs> Perfectly horizontal. How does it fit on a face that way? That's amazing. Makes Mario look like prepubescent. That's art. That's that's art. They right showed there. him once. I want him back. Wait, come on, run that back. Run that back real quick. Oh, what a perfect cameo by a mustache. <laughs> Jim Trotter, the third. Well, this guy, too. District Attorney of Beecham County. Oh, he looks so familiar. Oh, this guy's definitely, like, fathers and, like, corrupt businessmen and stuff from the 80s and 90s. Oh, I can see that, totally. Again, the comments in the chat right now are just like, it's obviously blah, blah, blah. Like, I know <laughs> we know these guys. <laughs> All right. Hey, there he is. Yeah. Judge Chamberlain Hallow, the court of Beecham County is now in session. Sound like he said in section. The '90s clothes are truly a lost art form. Oh yeah, real flair. Every jacket, so bit, <laughs> so oversized. <laughs> Your clients are charged with first degree murder. How they plead? Ayana, my client. Don't talk to me sitting in that chair. When you're dressed in this court, you will rise. My clients are. What are you wearing? I'm uh, wearing uh, clothes. <laughs> When you come into my court looking like you do, you not only insult me, but you insult the integrity of this court. I apologize, sir, but uh, this is how I dress. Next time you come into my courtroom, you will look loyally. Loyally. And wear a suit and tie. And that suit better be made out of some kind of cloth. <laughs> <laughs> my clients are caught completely by surprise. They thought they were getting arrested for uh, shoplifting a can of tuna. What are you telling me? Did they plead not guilty? No, I, I'm just trying to explain. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, no, so no. stressed. Uh, not guilty. <laughs> it's, 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 just say those words. That's all you got to do. There seems to be a great deal of confusion here. Mr. Gambini. Uh, see, my clients are... Uh, uh, Mr. Gambini. <laughs> there are only two ways to answer it. Guilty or not guilty. Your Honor, my clients didn't do anything. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, no, 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 no. It appears to me that you want to skip the arraignment process, go directly to trial, skip that, and get a dismissal. No, 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 no. Next words out of your mouth are either going to be guilty or not guilty. If I hear anything other 
than guilty or not guilty, you'll be in contempt. I don't even want to hear you clear your throat. <laughs> this judge was amazing. How do your clients plead? I think I get the point. No. Oh. You didn't say the words. No. You're now in contempt of court. Would you like to go for... Do you see contempt? it? Not guilty. Thank you. Preliminary hearing will be set for 9.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Please take Mr. Gambini into custody. His bail will be set at $200. Oh, no. All rise. It's a judge. Oh, that All rise like that stash. <laughs> <laughs> He's so different in this and in Lethal Weapon and in Goodfellas. Like, it's all three very different. Like, it's really cool to see. Yeah, I remember him in Goodfellas. He's like more of a hothead, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. insane. He's a psychopath. I almost had him! I almost had him! And he's like a motor mouth, like, irritating little, like, scrub and lethal weapon. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I love that she's taking pictures of everything, like him getting bailed out. You didn't look like you knew what you were doing today in that courtroom. Well, it's a lot of procedure, that's all. I mean, I'll learn it as I go. Learn as you go? Yeah, yeah. Didn't they teach you that in law school? Oh, does she not know he doesn't know shit either? You know, when you rebuild the carburetor, the first thing you do is you take the carburetor off good. the manifold. Mm -hmm. Supposing you skip the first step. Except for those beans. I'm not a bean man. Neither. You accidentally drop the jet, it goes down the carburetor, rolls along the manifold, and goes into the head. You just learned the hard way that you got to remove the carburetor first, right? So that's all that happened to me today. I love that. I like how everyone in the scene is drinking a Pepsi. I'm drinking a Coke. A Coke? <laughs> Who sponsored this movie? <laughs> There's five Cokes on screen. I love the car to procedure. Those are clever. Mm. The writing in this is really. It's top tier, yeah. Pool and chicken. Pool and chicken. <laughs> Everything you need. <laughs> Under one roof. Oh, the sunglasses really set this off. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, really great. Hell yeah. Oh, they look amazing. <laughs> He's familiar too. God damn. <laughs> His name's JT. I believe you and Lisa played a game of pool for $200, which she won. I'm here to collect. How about if I just kick your ass? <laughs> oh, a counter offer. <laughs> this is a tough decision you give me here. Get my ass kicked to collect $200. Hmm. I could use a good ass kick, and I'll be very honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the broken back guy from Fight Club that's in the brace. Do I have to kill you? What if I was just to kick the ever-loving shit out of you? <laughs> in your dreams. Oh, no, 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 no. In reality. <laughs> <laughs> if you kick the shit out of me. Yeah. Yeah, then you get the money. <laughs> what happened? We rented? No, I fell. <laughs> Are we going to fight now? Yeah. First, let me see the money. I can get it. All right, get it, and then we'll fight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fall in your place or somebody else's? My place. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's quietly a great lawyer about everything else but procedure. Right. Like, that was such a great scene to set up that he's good at lawyering, just not procedure. <laughs> right, right. Then I heard two loud bangs and saw two young men run out from the sack of suds and jump into a green car. Are those two young men present in the courtroom today? They sitting right there. Oof, eyewitness testimony. I saw them two boys go into the store. Then later I heard a gunshot, looked out the window, got into the car, and drove off. Now, do you think the real killer is going to be like a character we see throughout the movie, or do you think he's going to be someone we find out at the end? I think it's going to be people that look exactly like them. Oh. <laughs> I can see you that. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah, my yeah. guess from the comedy. I asked him if he did it, and he said, I shot the clerk. Oh, because everything's been a comedy of errors so far. I think it's going to be an error like that, where it's like they are similar and a similar car. Yeah, I can see that. Court finds sufficient evidence exists for this matter to go to trial this Monday, February 2nd. 10 a.m. Mr. Gambini, stand up. <laughs> Gonna talk about that fit again. It's tie time. Now, didn't I tell you the next time you appear in my courtroom that you dress appropriately? You were serious about that? <laughs> 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 
Great That's cut. So good. Great cut. <laughs> I mean, you, you're my fiance. You're supposed to stand by your man, you know, encourage me a little bit, a little encouragement. Oh, I'm sorry. You were wonderful in there. The way you handled that judge. Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off. Knock it off. You think I like f***ing up? Is that it? You know, you ragging on me is not going to give me any great spontaneous knowledge. An old Amoco? Is that what those are called? I remember that logo, but I don't remember. Wow. See, gas is a dollar and nine cents. <laughs> I'd travel a lot. I would I would do some driving. Tell you what. <laughs> I'm really scared. How the f did I get into this shit? Oh, sure. No problem. I could win the case. I already got myself sent to jail twice. I could win this thing, though. I mean, if I could keep my ass awake and out of jail long enough. Bet I could, huh? I think that once you're out there and you're doing your thing out there, I think you're going to be really great. Aww. That's a smart scene to show doubt so he's not just like a one note. Yeah. You don't fuck up. <laughs> and it just enhances their relationship. And yeah, I like that. That was a smart little 45 seconds. <laughs> Good Couldn't God. do it. If this was a conspiracy, they'd have to get all those people to lie. You think that's what's happening? Look, I think we should meet with the public defender. If he's honest, then we should go with him. Yeah, the doppelganger thing tracks with the theme of misunderstandings. That's my thought. Like, there's got to be a, a simple reason because the movie's complicated about it. So that makes me think it's like plus too it, like them. Plus, yeah, plus it would add to the comedy. That yeah, 100%. That simple. Why don't you just tell me your side of the story? We stand. Well, he, he wants to go with the public defender. All right, I'm, I'm going with the public defender, too. He's going to show you the bricks. He showed them to you in a very special way, but there's one thing he's not going to show you. When you look at the bricks at the right angle, they're as thin as this playing card. His whole case is an illusion because you're innocent. Hmm. One chance. If after that point you don't think that I'm the best man for the job, fire me. All I ask is for that one chance. I think you should give it to me. I love that this is also an underdog story. Yeah, too. and the escalation of stakes every time they doubt each other. That's so genius. Yeah, it's such a smart movie. Everyone's an underdog. Right, right. <laughs> and the witness has all the answers. He ends up proving the prosecution's case. And my cousin Ruthie's wedding. The groom's brother was that guy Alakazam? The magician with the ponytail? <laughs> <laughs> and every time he made something disappear... Vinny jumped on him. I mean, he nailed him. It was like, it's in his pocket. Or he's palming it, you know. Or th there's a mirror under the table. It's like Alakazam's worst nightmare. But he was just being Vinny. He was just being the quintessential Bambini. Bambini. Such a fun way to use tropes, stereotypes, whatever it is, like with Italian. Like, it's a really fun use of, like, pride in arguing. And, like, being that person. Mm hmm Looky here, JT. Now he's going to get his 200 bucks. Yeah. Hey, little Yankee boy, look here what I got. Get that money. $200. Bring it here. Let me see it. <laughs> How do I know that's not a bunch of ones with a 20 wrapped around it? It's 200 bucks. Fan it out. Show it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's good he's good man and i love all the b plot supporting the a plot but in a very different way that's a really fun structure yeah it's a very smart movie like every time we're in the courtroom it seems like he doesn't know what he's doing but everything around it, it's like oh no he's actually really smart we like building a case yeah like we're like building that case to come and we're building that case and we're also building our faith in him that he's capable of doing this yeah yeah I, and i like the, the underdog point <laughs> the, this hotel now, I wonder if, like, all this noise and the whistling is how is like, going to be used to help him solve this case. I know it doesn't take place around the same time, but I'm curious. If there's, like, like, a, a plot-driven? Yeah, yeah. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Does that freight train come through at 5 a.m. every morning? No, sir. It's very unusual. <laughs> 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 this uh, Judge Malloy, he says to me, you know what? You'd be a good litigator. I never thought of becoming a lawyer. All of a sudden, it seemed possible. So we got some case ahead of us here, huh? I'm like that murder weapon. But other than that, I feel pretty good. 
Hey, what are you doing this afternoon? You going hunting? I was thinking last night. If only I knew what he knows, you know? If he let me look at his file. You probably shouldn't have told him that. Yeah. You're right? I was like, why would you tell the, the opposite team that? I'm wondering how often that happens. I doubt ever. Hmm. Yeah. What am I going to wear? What are you going to hunt? <laughs> He's got a lot of stuffed heads in his office. Heads? Showed his knees and toes. He's got a boar, a bear, a couple of deer. Whoa, you're going to shoot a deer? I don't know. I suppose. <laughs> what about these pants I got on? You think they're okay? <laughs> Imagine you're a deer. You put your little deer lips down to the cool, clear water. Bam! A bullet rips off party. <laughs> now I ask you, would you give a f what kind of pants the son of a bitch who shot you was wearing? <laughs> what a great scene. I love them so much. Did she win for this this movie? That sounds familiar now that you've said it. Yeah, because before we started, I saw it said uh, Oscar winning film. Or like, it won some sort of Oscar. Huh. I'd sure like to get a look at your files. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll have my secretary do it. Can you Xerox all the files on the Gambini Rothenstein case? We'll have to look after. Yeah. What's all that? Trotter's files. You stole his files? <laughs> he offers to have his secretary copy everything from him. That's very impressive, finessing. Hmm. He's letting us use his hunting cabin as soon as he gets back. It's in the woods, it's quiet, he sleeps like a baby when he's there. Terrific, you're a hell of a bonder. What's the catch? Don't you wonder why Trotter gave you his file? He has to. By law, you're entitled. It's called disclosure, you head. He has to give you a list of all his witnesses. You can talk to all his witnesses. Didn't teach you that in law school either. <laughs> now let me ask you this. How many different levels of thickness have you gone through? What'd you have for breakfast? What's that brown stuff? Huh? You also don't see comedies with this sense of humor today. What name? Like the not ironic, but like the the misunderstanding comedy. It's oh, like more right. subtle, you know. It's, yeah, it's not jokes, it's comedic circumstance or situational. Exactly. Yeah, situational humor does seem less common. an interesting looking guy right he's a very long head kind of looks like ernie <laughs> i can see it <laughs> like bert and sorry ernie? sorry bert bert's got the long face right ernie's got the wide face bert's yellow ernie's orange right i th uh, i think so he looks like the long-faced fellow i just got a fax from the new york state office of judicial records i grew up there my whole life why can't i think of their names it's a <laughs> brain fart right now oh god you're not going to find any records of Vincent LaGuardia Gambini practicing in any courts. 20 years ago, I became an actor. There was this very prominent stage actor in New York. His name was Vincent Gambini. Maybe you heard of him. No. <laughs> well, now, I practice law under my legally changed stage name. What name is that? Jerry Gallo. Jerry Gallo. You can still call me Gambini. <laughs> Jerry Gallo, the big attorney. He checks up on this guy. His name will show up all over the place. Mm. You didn't actually read the article. No. Why is that? Did he die? Because he's dead. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You're acting like you're nervous or something. I'll tell you what I'm nervous about. I am in the dark here with all this legal crap. I have no idea what's going on. All I know is you're screwing up, and I can't help. Let her help you, bro. We agreed to get married as soon as you won your first case. Meanwhile, 10 years later, my niece is getting married. My biological clock is ticking like this. And the way this case is going, I ain't never getting married. Lisa, I don't need this. Oh, what a fun curveball. 10 years, wow. I got a judge that's just aching to throw me in jail. An idiot who wants to fight me for $200. <laughs> I ain't slept in five days. I got no money. A dress code problem. Your life, our marriage, and let me see, what else can we pile on? Is there any more shit we could pile on to the top of the outcome of this case? Is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> Escalation of stakes. Maybe it was a bad time to bring it up. Because the movie starts at a place where you're like, it couldn't get worse for them, and it has to crescendo. It's incredible how well they stack the stakes on top of them without it being, like, plot convenient. So many movies are like, oh, and this has to happen, or, like, something. They do such a good job. <laughs> Damn. You did not catch a break. But, yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's very smartly written. <laughs> <laughs> 
That outfit. The little short shorts. <laughs> the white sneaks. This is very romantic. Under the stars. All around for miles. It's very romantic. I haven't slept in five days, woman. I can't make love to you. This is not happening. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, honey, move my right back. Wait. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. The mud. Not get any worse. Oh, look at that. That is uh, in there. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Not the white sneaks. The red mud doesn't mess around either. Oh! <laughs> Those are quality pratfalls. Good work. Yeah. Wow. Come on. There you go. You got it. Oh, no! What was in that pink plastic thing in the trunk? It's your suit. Ah. Uh, what is my suit doing in the trunk? I had it clean. I thought it'd be a nice surprise. Go in there with a nice clean suit. Oh, no. Got 30 minutes to take a shower, get a new suit, get dressed, and get to the courthouse. Get shower, I'll get your suit. Look <laughs> here. <laughs> I got you $200. <laughs> you gonna kick the shit out of me now? <laughs> what in the flying squirrel punch that was, was that? so good that crossbody superman punch that was amazing i've never seen something like that in my life that's so funny three feet in joe pesci just taking him out <laughs> yes uh, the red suit with the bow tie those Beautiful. lapels are enormous <laughs> there's a tail <laughs> are you mocking me with that outfit i'm not mocking you judge then explain that outfit he said a suit i bought a suit now it's covered in mud this town doesn't have a one hour cleanest so i had to buy a new suit Except that the only store you could buy a new suit in has got the flu. <laughs> I had to get this in a secondhand store. It's either wear the leather jacket, which I know you hate, or this. <laughs> I wore this ridiculous thing for you. <laughs> you on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm holding you in contempt of court. Oh, there's a surprise. What'd you say? Oh. What'd I say? What? <laughs> Your statement, sir. Ladies and gentlemen of the. What? Oh no! What the hell happened? What the... He's sweating and like. Has he never done this before? He's public defender for a reason. You like short circuiting? What's going on? Um. 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 You gonna shit yourself? What's going on? What is happening? Oh, it's so uncomfortable. That they. Prosecution's case is circumstantial and 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 and. Are you like a spit guard? Like like a... So uncomfortable. It's it's effective. Coincidental. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I was wondering how they're gonna make someone look worse than how he's behaving. And <sighs> well, there it is. Yeah. The hell was that? That's it. Mm. Nailed. It. Everything we talked about. Well, I get a little nervous. A little there. nervous. I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> so apathetic. Oh, God. Is this the call? Yes. Thank you, sir. No further question, John. When you got a black and white photo. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's going to come into play. Or if did they had they, they color that right? 91? I, yeah. I don't know. I think so. Uh, uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, 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 I know people had color photos, but I don't know if it was widespread is my point. No, they, I feel like they did. I like, like, I they remember developing color photos. Really? No, no, I do. <laughs> I see you wear eyeglasses sometimes. Well, would you care to show those eyeglasses to the jury, please? Thank you. <sighs> were you wearing the mat day? No. You were 50 feet away. You made a positive eyewitness identification. And, 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 and you were not wearing your necessary eyeglasses. They're reading glasses. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Well, uh, well, you 
did not read the license plate on yeah, that car. Yeah, cannot confirm. <laughs> what color eyes the the, the, the defendants had? Brown, hazel green. That's not going to <laughs> help you. <laughs> you said reading glasses. No more questions. <laughs> Mr. Gambini, your witness. <sighs> He's a tough one. <laughs> oh, Jesus. When you viewed the defendant, what angle was your point of view? They was kind of walking toward me when they entered the store. And when they left, what angle was your point of view? They was kind of walking away from me. <laughs> so would you say you got a better shot of them going in and not so much coming out? Yeah. Is it possible to two Utes? To what? What? Did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? Two Utes. <laughs> <laughs> Had the clerk take money, make change, then leave. Then two different men drive up in a similar... Don't shake your head. I'm not done yet. Wait till you... <laughs> Go in, shoot the clerk, and then leave? They didn't have enough time. Well, how much time was they in the store? Five minutes. You testified earlier that the boys went into the store and you had just begun to make breakfast. So obviously it takes you five minutes to make breakfast. Uh, Do you remember what you had? Eggs and grits. I like grits too. <laughs> Amazing. Instant grits? No self-respect and suddenly uses instant grits. <laughs> how could it take you five minutes to cook your grits? When it takes the entire grit eating world twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, boy, is smart. I'm the a grits. fast cook, I guess. <laughs> Couldn't hear. You. Did you say you're a fast cook? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are we to believe that boiling water soaks into a grit faster in your kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps the laws of physics cease to exist on your stove. <laughs> Were these magic grits? Did you buy them from the same guy who sold Jack his beanstalk bean? Oh, uh, yeah, objection, Your Honor. Objection sustained. <laughs> He's so good. Are you sure about that five minutes? I may have been mistaken. Yeah. I got no more use for this guy. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's a lawyer. That's an arguer. <laughs> <laughs> I want him. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the first witness. And it's a contempt <laughs> Oh, my kid. God. Of course. Maybe I'll finally get some sleep. Doing good, huh? <laughs> He's going to go to prison to sleep. <laughs> no. Damn. Oh. You cannot catch a break. <laughs> <laughs> it's like New York. It's, it's, it's oh, like city noise. Right. Oh, you that's can, so you, funny. <laughs> I'm used to this. One constant. Uh, what are these pictures of? My house and stuff. House and stuff. <laughs> what is this rusty, dusty, dirty looking thing over your window? It's a screen. And what are these really big things right in the middle of your view? Trees. Jeez, that's right. Don't be afraid to shout them right out. <laughs> <laughs> what are these thousands of little things that are on trees? Leaves. Leaves. Mustache. <laughs> 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 yes. You could positively identify the defendant looking through this dirty window, this crud-covered screen with all these leaves on them. Yeah, he even has the judge, judge and thought over there. Is it possible you just saw two guys in a green convertible and not necessarily these two particular guys? Well, I suppose. I'm finished with this guy. <laughs> Amazing. Look how far he's come. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Mrs. Riley, when you saw the defendants, were you wearing your glasses? Yes, I was. Over here, dear. Oh! How long you been wearing glasses? Since I was six. Mm. So uh, as your eyes have gotten more and more out of whack, how many different levels of thickness have you gone through? Over 60 years, maybe 10 times. Damn. How far were the defendants from you when you saw them entering the sack of sun? 100 feet. Would you hold this, please? <laughs> Can you do that? This is 50 feet. How many fingers am I holding up? Let the record show that counsel is holding up two fingers. Your Honor, please, huh? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Riley, and only Mrs. Riley. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up now? Four. 
What do you think now, dear? Thinking of getting thicker glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got a little surprise for you tomorrow. You know you have to disclose all your evidence to me. I'll disclose it first thing in the morning. Judge's gonna have to admit it. Well, should I be worried? I sure would be if I were you. Oh, that poor man never gets sleep. <laughs> you gotta disclose. You didn't just say, I'll tell you in the morning. Right? How does that work time-wise? Yeah, no. I'm a special automotive instructor of forensic studies for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The defense is entitled to advance notice of any witness who will testify so that we could properly prepare for cross-examination. He's got a lawyer? Now he's a lawyer. Yup, yup. That is a lucid, intelligent, well-thought-out objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Overruled. What? Wow. We compared the tire marks outside the convenience store with the rear tires of the defendant's car. They're the same model. The car, leaving the convenience store, spun its rear tires dramatically. Now, I took a sample of that rubber and analyzed it. I'm so into this case. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm so invested. Who is it? <laughs> the chemical composition between the two samples was found to be identical. Mm. Identical. <laughs> I just faxed the clerk of New York and asked him what he knew about Jerry Gallo. Gallo with the G? Jerry Gallo's dead. Well, I'm not Jerry Gallo. I'm Jerry Callo. <laughs> C A L L O. <laughs> <laughs> can I speak to the clerk? Okay, I'll be here. You can call back after three. That gives you a stay of execution. <laughs> Unless by some miracle you happen to win this case in the next 90 minutes. Oh, a new mm. ticking clock. Raising the stakes. I was wondering how that could further. It's really impressive. I found out the gal was dead. What do you say? I'm trying to think about the case now, okay? I'm sorry. Let her help you. Can I help? No, you can't help. I wish you could, but you can't. Let her help. That's the secret. Look how you, what does that look supposed to mean? I'm a piece of shit because I can't figure out a way for you to help. I'll help you do the research. She's smart. She's she continued to show that she's smart. And she read the book. I should have looked at these pictures before. I like this. This is, uh, this is our first hotel room, right? Here's one of me from behind. And I didn't think I could feel worse than I did a couple of seconds ago. <laughs> it's dog shit. Dog shit. That's great. You feel real stupid in about five seconds. Yep. I'm ready for. You did it. The case cracker. Me in the shower. <laughs> Lisa! Lisa! Mm. No, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Right there. It's in front of your face. Should have let her help. Listen to your girl. Two separate cars could be driving a Michelin model. Of course. What's the best selling single model tire? The Michelin XGV. <laughs> Can I have a five minute recess? Do me a favor. Please chase this. Bring this girl to the stand. I need you to come back into the court and I need the phone. Honey, come on. I need your help. I don't I need give a shit. Leave me alone. Come on, I found it. I found it. Come on. <laughs> I think Danny DeVito could pick up Rizzo Tobac. Hmm? Danny DeVito, Joe Pesci. <laughs> the defense calls as its first witness, Ms. Mona Lisa Vito. This witness is an expert in the field of automobiles. Your Honor, would you please instruct the bailiff Officer. to escort Ms. Vito to the witness? Hmm. <laughs> wow. Uh, you're supposed to be some kind of expert in automobiles, is that correct? Can you please answer the counselor's question? No, I hate him. <laughs> Do you two know each other? Yeah, she's my fiance. Certainly explain the hostility. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, uh, why, dear, this witness as to the extent of her expertise. So he's going to do his job for him. <laughs> What's your current profession? I'm an out-of-work hairdresser. Makes sense with that, that hair. Well, my father was a mechanic. His father was a mechanic. My mother's father was a mechanic. Families, obviously qualified. <laughs> Have you ever worked as a mechanic? Yeah, in my father's garage, yeah. What'd you do in your father's garage? Ooh, the condescension is gonna... Mm. Oil changes, brake relining. Does being an ex-mechanic necessarily qualify you as being an expert on tire marks? Ms. Vito's expertise is in general automotive knowledge. If Mr. Trotter wishes to voir dire a witness... <laughs> He's going to be more than satisfied. Okay. 
What would the correct ignition timing be on a 1955 Bel Air Chevrolet with a 327 cubic inch engine? Because Chevy didn't make a 327 in 55. The 327 didn't come out till 62. Go off. Ignition timing would be four degrees before top dead center. Go off. <laughs> That's right. And they set that up in that first scene with the car. Yeah, yeah. But someone downing her throughout. Like, I love that. Oh, so well set up. It has been argued by me that two sets of guys met up at the Sack of Suds at the same time, driving identical. Can you tell us by what you see in this picture if the defense's case holds water? No, the defense is wrong. <laughs> These marks were made by a 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Would you like me to explain? I would love to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> It's a limited slip differential, which distributes power equally to both the right and left tires. The 64 Skylark had a regular differential, which anyone who's been stuck in the mud... <laughs> step on the gas, one tire spins, the other tire does nothing. Back to the mud of the grits. The 64 Skylark had a solid rear axle. So when the left tire would go up on the curb, the right tire would tilt out and ride along its edge. There were only two other cars made in America Thanks to school, that girl. had positive traction and independent rear suspension and enough power to make these marks. One was the Corvette, which could never be confused with the Buick Skylark. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the 1963 Pontiac Tempest. That's why she got the Oscar if she did. That's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. You've been a lovely, lovely witness. <laughs> Aww. That was amazing. That was so good. I'd like to recall George Wilbur. Ms. Vito, uh, you can stand down. <laughs> <laughs> He's smitten too. Oh, yeah. How'd you like uh, Ms. Vito's testimony? Very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> She's cute too, huh? Yes, very. <laughs> <laughs> In your expert opinion, would you say... Who did he fetch? That everything Miss mm. Vito said on the stand was 100% accurate? I'd have to say that. And is there any way in the world the Buick that the defendants were driving made those tire tracks? Don't lie under oath. Don't lie. Tell the truth. No. <laughs> your Honor, I call Sheriff Farley. <laughs> Amazing. This is such a good courtroom movie. Oh, yeah. On a hunch, I took it upon myself to check out if there was any information on a 63 Pontiac Tempest stolen or abandoned recently. This computer readout confirms that two boys who fit the defendant's description were arrested two days ago. <laughs> it was the Vic. Called it. For driving a stolen metallic mint green 1963 Pontiac Tempest. <laughs> Is that it? No. <laughs> A 357 Magnum revolver was found in their possession. The weapon. Yeah! What caliber bullet was used to murder Jimmy Willis? 357 Magnum. The defense rests. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> now that's my cousin Vinny. That's incredible. <laughs> Connor, in light of Miss Vito's and Mr. Wilbur's testimony, the state like dismiss all charges. Yeah! yeah! Amazing. Oh, it's so good. Now it's like optimistic law and order music. Yeah, yeah. It's like Magnum P.I. <laughs> <laughs> You're great. And um, I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope we can do it again sometime. Mm. Ben. Bill. <sighs> He's trying to get out of there so bad. <laughs> Take your time. Pick the right words. Get back to New York. Give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this place. <laughs> hey, you did a terrific job. Yeah, he's trying so hard. <laughs> if I don't get out of here now, I might never be able to leave. Facts <laughs> 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 here from the clerk of New York. I owe you an apology, sir. Oh. <laughs> I'm honored to shake your hand. <laughs> But I gotta tell you, you're one hell of a trial lawyer. That's right. You're one hell of a judge. Oh, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. What the hell was that all about back there? I had a friend send a fax to the judge confirming the very impressive legal stature of Jerry Hallow. What friends you got in the clerk's office? Judge Malloy. So what's your problem? <laughs> 
My problem is I wanted to win my first case without any help from anybody. You win all your cases, but with somebody else's help. And then afterwards, you have to go up to somebody and you have to say thank you. <laughs> I won my first case. You know what this means. Yeah, you think I'm going to marry you. Well, you're not going to marry me now? No way. You can't win a case by yourself. Useless. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd get married this weekend. That is not romantic. I want a wedding in church with bridesmaids and flowers. How many times did you say that spontaneous is romantic? Hey, a burp is spontaneous. A burp is not romantic. <laughs> My cousin Vinny. Excellent work. That was great. Oh, man. Mona Lisa Vito. All right, Reject Nation, let's get real for a moment. Running this channel is incredible, but managing finances, especially taxes and budgeting, both for the channel and my personal life, can be overwhelming. That's where Rocket Money has been a financial lifesaver for me, even before I ever partnered up with them. Like I said, I've been very fortunate to be working with brands whose products I already use, so it's a win-win for them. But it can be a win-win for you too, because there's a reason I use them. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that simplifies managing money by canceling unnecessary subscriptions, lowering bills, and crafting a budget that fits your specific lifestyle. For someone like me who can easily lose track of expenses throughout every single day of the month, it's been eye-opening to see where I was overspending, stuff I don't use that I kept paying for, especially apps. Man, I have way too many apps. Rocket Money does the heavy lifting by analyzing your spending, then customizes notifications to help you stay within your budget goals. It's not just about saving money. It's about actively seeing and feeling your financial progress. It's a great feeling. They track your monthly subscriptions too. So many free trials I've signed up for that I forgot to, you know, get rid of before the free trial was done. Making it super easy to cancel the ones you don't use. A couple of clicks and you're putting money back in your pocket. I'm telling you, have you ever found hidden subscriptions or paid for services you forgot about? Because Rocket Money is a huge asset in helping to uncover those and even negotiate some of my bills down to up to like 20%. So if you're ready to take control of your finances and there's no better time than now because it is the beginning of the year, check out Rocket Money and see how much you could be saving. Stop wasting money on things you do not use. So to help support the channel and help support your wallet, visit rocketmoney.com slash reach. Rocket Money currently has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. They've helped me and I'm confident they'll do the same for you. That's rocketmoney.com slash rejects. Your bank account will thank you. Hello there, esteemed viewer of The Real Rejects. I, Greg Alba, language connoisseur and worldly gentleman, am here to bestow upon you the secrets of Babbel. Babbel is an engaging language learning app designed for real life conversations, offering quick 10 minute lessons tailored by linguistic experts to effectively teach you a new language. Language. Its conversation-based approach enhanced with speech recognition technology makes Babbel worth trying for anyone looking to learn at their own pace, anytime, anywhere. My dear friends, in this age of monolingual mundanity, 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 Babbel is our beacon of hope. Crafted by an army of over 150 language experts, their lessons are like linguistic caviar. Rich, refined, and oh so satisfying. Personal tale of triumph. I once whispered sweet nothings in Spanish, or for the layman, Espanol, to my wife, courtesy of Babbel. Her reaction, well, I'll tell you, she was utterly bewitched. Greg, you silver-tongued devil. No paraphrase. She exclaimed such vocabulary as I basked in the glory of my perfect pronunciation. Because Babbel isn't just about learning words. It's about embracing the art of conversation with podcasts, live classes, and a veritable smorgasbord of interactive lessons. I know the words I'm saying. And their speech recognition? It's like having a personal language butler. Ensuring every syllable is impeccably crisp. Now brace yourselves for an offer of monumental proportions. Here's a special limited, limited, time. limited time. Deal for our viewers and listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription. But again, only for our viewers at babbel.com slash rejects. 55% off at babbel.com slash rejects. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash rejects. Rules and restrictions. May apply. Join me, the Greg Alba, in the adventure of language mastery at Babbel. We shall not just learn no, nay, we shall conquer the world of communication. Or as they say in Spanish, comunicación. <laughs> We're done with this ad. That was a lot of fun. That was a hell of a lot of fun. Like, what a joyous time at the movies. That was like... I, I hate the expression, they don't make them like they used to, but I was thinking the whole time, I didn't get... I get the technical prowess of Anatomy of a Fall, but mm -hmm. but I didn't connect to it to Best Picture or Best Actor. Like I just, it felt like it could have been an episode of Law and Order, mm. and I was wondering what other people connected to in a way I didn't. And then I don't know how to turn this down. It's okay, I got you. <laughs> 
Oh, hold on. It's the oh. orange one. Aha. Uh, but I, I couldn't connect with it in a way that felt like it was superior to excellent Law and Order or something that felt like procedural but longer. This was the difference. This yeah. felt like a movie. This felt like it had characters that I, I wanted to follow outside of it. It felt like it had a, a, a rhythm and flow, and it was fun. The fun wasn't what separated. And I don't even fall is, is insightful and passionate and, and good, but it still just felt like a two-hour captivating show mm. this felt like a movie yeah. and there's something different to me pacing atmospherically like this to me is more best picture than an anime of a fall no disrespect to an anime of a fall i just like when barbie got best picture but not best director or best actress a lot of people were like well what would you take out and for me Best director Greta Gerwig over for me, and I'm gonna fall. And best actor over, and like I don't think Sandra Hewler did a bad job, but to me, what Margot brought had a lot more to it. And this is what I would now point to now that I've seen it of like what I thought was missing from Adam and Fall. This had because yeah. this was all the things I want in a movie, and it was a cop. I mean, like procedural judge thing, but it never felt like Law and Order, except for when we joked about the score, but like, at no point would I have felt like this was episodic. At no point did this feel like something I'd just tune into. Yeah, no, it had a really good sense of, of pacing, and it did feel like a movie, and I like the fact that the first half of it really was like this comedy, even though it had the core elements in it, yeah. but once he finally became that lawyer, you be it was like a captivating like law, uh, law case, like some classic uh, Law and Order, but like in, in a film form. And yeah, this movie had a really good balance of not only being funny being smart with his humor mm -hmm. but also having those those moments of of genuine connection between him and um marissa tomei's character mm -hmm. and finding uh a way to use those serious moments to help us endear us to this character because when he first comes into the scene he's like he, he's inexperienced he's a joke but he takes himself seriously yeah because he knows he can do it and over the course of the events that take place around the court case we we become endeared and we believe in him as well because of the fact that he oh he doesn't know this the book smarts but he's good at arguing he's good at um navigating situations he has the sense of intuition to him yeah and yeah, I definitely see that why this was a Oscar contender for sure. It's it's funny that you brought up Anatomy of a Fall. I'm actually as of recording this, I'm going to watch it tonight because I haven't oh, no seen way. it yet. Yeah, this is crazy. Well, I hope I ha I didn't give anything away, but no, I also no. hope that you get more out of it than I did because that's what I always want out of movies. Like I don't like not connecting in a way that other people have. Mm -hmm. I'd always rather connect. I'd always rather like when people love a movie and I don't I don't feel any sense of like I'm gonna make a YouTube video about it. I just go like oh it's a bummer. I'm, I got two less hours of my life of joy. Yeah. So I hope that you find another one of these. It's funny you're having such a procedural day. Yeah. I'm just like okay I'm down for some law. Let's get it. But I, I do think this also set a lot of really beautiful seeds in a way that I don't see a lot of procedurals doing long form where the grits were vital. The mud was vital. The setting of the South was vital, not just for comedy, but also for narrative. Mm -hmm. The the setting allowed for the jury to have an innate sense of character, the judge to have an innate sense of character, the prosecutor, the, the circumstances around them, but then also the details of the case were so specifically Southern. Like yeah. there's no grits coming up in new England. Like mm -hmm. that's, you know what I mean? Like that's really interesting. And the, and the mud element was a comedic tone for them to get stuck. And that I thought was better than there was a moment when they woke up. I think a lesser comedy would have had them be late. Yeah. And I remember him looking at his watch and I would have been like, yeah, you'd wake up at the sunrise and I would have judged it more if they were late. But when it was mud, I was like, oh, they took the smarter comedic route. And then I wasn't even thinking mud would tie in later. And also the planting of the seeds with Marissa Tomei. She's doubted throughout the film. And I expected the twist being, you know, her knowledge was so important to him. I didn't expect it to be car knowledge, and that's a way more powerful thing for her to have than her to be suddenly better at law than him because that invalidates him, and it's like he actually studied law. So it would have felt a little like cheapened whereas yeah. the car being the thing it's it's like her knowledge obviously assisted him but her knowledge is the thing that put it over the top, and I love that. No, yeah. She was in assistance of this case, but she shined all of her own. Her own knowledge, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of really good stuff about this. One thing I will say is that I thought that when this movie started, even though it was, it was my cousin Vinny, that it seemed like uh, Ralph Mafia and his friend were going to be like the leads of the movie or like yeah. be more prominent. But then it kind of like put them in the, the back burner and then very much it was their movie, which I thought was uh, was really cool. 
Um, yeah, we talked we talked about the score a little bit and how that was really unique. <laughs> unique, yeah. Had like it's uh it's this levity to it in the beginning and then it really got serious towards the end. And then um, found the mix at the end then. Yeah, it kind yeah, of was yeah. like a like a what do they call it when there's a suite? When it combines mm. different sounds throughout and makes a new sound, it felt yeah. like that was, you know, fun, 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 somber, law, somber, law, <laughs> fun, somber, law. <laughs> like it, it became this its own thing. And, and that's what the movie is. And I was really impressed at the score. I rarely notice it. It's not a thing that I usually I just personally am not that tuned, but I, I noticed it a lot in this and, and had a really good time with it. And I, I definitely think that's something that isn't as common in, in today's movies. Uh, the joy in a score. Yeah. But I also find that I don't. There's something inherently unique about 80s and 90s cinema where it can be situationally funny, it can be earnestly dramatic, and it can have really strong performances, but it's still more immediately watchable. There's something like USA, TNT, TBS about the 20 years of movie where I don't know if it's some of it's nostalgia, some of it's uh, circumstantial to my love of the time. And I think there's a subconscious element to my psychology where there's pattern recognition for wardrobe and location and film aesthetic that I'm inherently more comfortable. Mm. Like, I think there's a, a familiarity of meal. Like when you eat a meal that tastes like something, you know, and there's a couple new ingredients, you're more likely to like the whole, you know, the whole dish, accoutrement. The whole. like the, the whole thing, <laughs> you know, becomes an accompaniment. Whereas like a lot of movies today, I don't get as immediately settled and comfortable. So maybe I'm giving it a little bit more brusqueness because I'm not as settled. Whereas this felt like something I could throw on any point And that doesn't belittle those things. Whereas a lot of times movies that are quality and excellent now i can't casually watch as easily there's something really wonderful about this time yeah there's a the sense of taking its content seriously with the sense of levity to it as well mm -hmm. and i i like that it does have that that easy watch kind of quality to it uh no matter what you can put this on in the background or you can show this to a now friend i've seen it now that I've seen it, exactly. It'd be hella disrespectful to be like, I wonder if they win. Watch right. the end. I don't uh, care, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I agree, yeah. No, no, I think it, uh, it it does those things very well. And I don't watch, I haven't watched a wealth of, of 90s comedies like this. Oh, granted, since I've been here, like watching more Adam Sandler's and like stuff uh, of that, uh, of that season of that time, but watching an older movie, watching it's the way that it does its comedy, whether it's the situational stuff and like, and I think it was, it's smart situational because it's, it's able to have this, this dialogue where you see where both characters are coming from, but um, those two, two things clash together, that discomfort of it makes it more hilarious. And it and takes the unbelievability to just a notch too far, but not so far that it becomes farce. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 still within the realm of, of believability. And yeah, and I wish that more comedies were like this because I feel like we entered an era within like the early 2000s where it was very like over the top or like yeah. a lesser movie would have made certain bits go on for like a little bit too long. Because like, mm -hmm. huh, you get the joke? Huh, yeah, huh? or more like punchy humor with dialogue. Which is fine if a movie's got comedic jokes that are delivered to camera. I don't mind jokes in film, but I think that sometimes if you do situational humor and jokes, it negates them both. Or if you don't get the tone that you need one or the other. And I think this did a really good job. Like, there weren't a lot of, like, zingers. It was the world building that made it funny. Exactly, exactly. It was the world building. It was the the type of characters that we had. It was the, the connections between them. And, yeah, man, we just don't uh, see that a lot this these days. It's funny that we, we watched, um, me and John watched big daddy and that movie have you seen that movie yeah, i have yeah yeah so that movie also ends with a court case but i feel like this movie did that so much better even though that movie had heart to it and sure. it's also a comedy but i feel like it found that balance of in spite of the fact that it was this comedy had that that layer of taking its content with a degree of seriousness your because new I genre feel like is court case man that's a lot that's three like that's <laughs> sorry I'm just, I'm just noticing that like your big daddy this and then going in Madville fall <laughs> oh you've been in the courtroom man the that court. is in it been in the law man it's in genre content court <laughs> No, we were going to say something, right? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, I think that uh, Big Daddy is a uh, very similar tonally, but I do think this does it better. I'm agreeing with, like, I think that this movie establishes a world a little stronger so that when things go to an 11, it feels more like it's suiting that world versus Big Daddy. I definitely feel like is like sometimes it, it Sandler's where it's just like, ah! and you're like, yeah. oh, I get it. Like, you're just, <laughs> and I, I like Adam Sandler, but there's moments that definitely feel like they're for Sandler comedy's sake. Versus yeah. versus the world building, mm -hmm. um, and and respectfully, Marissa Tomei. 
Yeah. I God like, damn. Whew. Just respectfully. Just like I'm super just like, like whew. damn woman. I, I just want to give and also shoulder pads. <laughs> this movie is 32 years old now. Wow. 32 years Marissa old. Marissa Tomei is <sighs> aging like wine. Fine wine. Like I just got acknowledged like 32 years is I mean a life. It, a whole ass life. And she looks it's more life than me. <laughs> immaculate. Immaculate. So I just wanted to give I just wanted to give love to Marissa Tomei. Just Aunt like, May. I, I, Aunt May. Mm. Doing the work. Doing now, the work. Stay I doing the gotta work. also Didn't say, care. Joe Pesci, uh, I forgot about Home Alone when I was listening. Oh, like, isn't right? Home Alone. I haven't seen isn't Home Alone in so Web long. Bandit? He is. He, he is. is. Okay, I'm not crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not being heightest. It's not just because <laughs> it was a small guy. Uh, I thought it was him, but then as soon, no, as, no, as, soon as I said it, I was like, am I somehow stereotyping <laughs> short men? Angry uh, comments. Yeah, I'm like little angry Italian men. Uh, I'm glad it's him. But yeah. also another different type. Mm-hmm. Like he's very... Hey, that Joe Pesci's going places. He's going but places. Like, I feel he's going to so have a long career. I'm 30 years behind and complimenting the work of Joe Pesci. But like, he's <laughs> so good that I didn't even think of him in a role like this because he's no. so versatile. He's super versatile. And I wish that I would see more Joe Pesci around these days because he's super good. I haven't, I started it. Don't hate me. I started it, but um, the Irishman. I know he's in that. Yeah, like, he has a small that's role much in more that. that Goodfellas. I mean, it's like Scorsese, obviously, and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, I, as as a, a lover of Scorsese, I didn't, Irishman doesn't make my top five, so I'm, I'm not offended. He didn't finish. Okay. I, like I, I think Scorsese is one of the greatest filmmakers to ever live. Irishman just didn't connect with me because the um the de aging was so distracting for me that really? when, there's a point where like De Niro's de aged to be like a 20 year old, but like he still moves like a 70 year old. Oh, so no. I felt really uncomfortable. I was like, I feel bad for everyone involved because it's, it's De Niro moves amazing for a 70 year old. Right, like De Niro, right. the fact that De Niro's like rocking around, like I'm like, yeah, but he doesn't move amazing for a 20 year old and it pulls you out of the narrative and it makes it more of a, like I'm out of the story. Cause I had a moment to be like, Oh right. No, De Niro. And then you just don't think of it. And yeah. that, that pulled me out consistently. There's a lot of moments like that where I'm like, I wish they just cast younger or I wish they'd made a different choice or the technology is not there yet. Don't make that part of the story. Yeah. Uh, whereas Pesci and De Niro in Goodfellas, they had a, a time go by, but it was mm. never a thing that was so aggressively far in the future or past that you were thinking about them. You right. were in the story. Yeah. So this is a great Pesci for me because it was the most comedic next to Lethal Weapon, but it was the opposite character. In Lethal Weapon, he's inept but lovable, and you mm. c- are confused why you love him because he's so cloying and greeting and like he's grating on your nerves. And in this, you're like, oh, he's he's not the right guy for the job, but he's all heart and he's not treating her well, but you can tell he loves her because they establish so many scenes of their love and their passion. That's how they fight. That the love is the first thing. The annoyance is back there. Lethal Weapon, the annoyance is first, and you reluctantly love him. Mm. So they're almost the inverse character. Huh. So I really loved this because I was like, oh, Pesci. Because it's really hard to play the exact opposite of yourself comedically. Interesting. And I, now I'm curious who Pesci's more like. Huh. You know what I mean? You really want to make me watch that movie Dude, now. Lethal Weapon is <laughs> I need to watch Lethal Weapon. One of my top 10 movies of all time. Man. I've probably watched Lethal Weapon more than 30 times. Mm-hmm. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Like, I love okay. that movie. That's a comfort movie and an every Christmas movie. Shit. Just saying. What's your, okay, comedy, drama, the spectrum of movies. What is your barometer for what makes a good movie for you? Uh, in order to get five stars, which only 27 films ever have. Wow. I've, I've rated 2,700 some movies. Mm-hmm. 27, like less than 1%. That's a No, I'm at 3,000 wow. now. 3,000 films, 27 I got in five stars. Wow. Um, 3,000 films, Jesus. That's amazing. Technical prowess, acting, directing, um, originality of story, uh, impact personally, mm-hmm. and then the big one to make it five stars versus four and a half is rewatchability. Yeah. So a movie can be exceptional and can have all those other things, but if I don't feel like rewatching it again, I give it four and a half because like that's an A, but it's not an A plus because yeah. like I need to want to go back in. Yeah. To me, Lethal Weapon is an A plus because it's something I've watched too many times, and I think it's so genre redefining, and I think it's a lot of those things. But like, uh, what's a good example? Like both Paddingtons are five star. Um, wow. But like. I adore A Knight's Tale. A I Knight's adore Tale. it, but it's four and a half. Okay. Because there are, are things that I'm like, I don't think this is for everyone. It's too specific to me, so I can't mm. give it the A+, plus because I could understand how someone wouldn't love it. Mm. So, so like if, it's, if it doesn't appeal on a general sense, you'd like not go like I, I, can, I acknowledge that I, I, to have a five star, I think it, it's more universal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whereas like Paddington, if you don't like Paddington, I'm like, that's odd. 
Hmm. I mean, like, I've seen okay. I've seen the the part of the first Patterson. I need to see the second one. Okay, but like, when, when, when people one, don't like it, I I that gives me more of a, like I'm not going to think less of you, but I'm definitely going to be like I'm surprised by that. Right. But if someone doesn't like a Night Sale, I'm not surprised. I'm just like, oh, that's a really specific movie. It's not your cup of you know right. what I mean. We have we have different tastes. Yeah. Different Whereas I think The Matrix is a five star film. But if you hate like sci-fi, it might not be for you, but I'd be more like, well, that's not your genre, so you wouldn't have ever given it a chance, so it's not going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like for me, it's like kind of something you talked about. Like, it is that feeling that invokes in me. I can, I can recognize the the difference between like, oh, that was a very well-made movie versus like, <laughs> oh, that was a really good movie for me, to me. Yeah. And I think that watchability is something that is really important to me. Mm-hmm. Like, when I get excited about a movie or I know when I love a movie, it's like, oh, I want to show this to other people. Yeah. And like, I want to experience this. I want to not only watch it again so I can catch other things or relive that that experience, but I want to see you react to the things that I experience. And I want to share it with people. Exactly. Yeah. You want to know that you're spreading the word. Like, to me, this is four and a half stars. Yeah, like, this, this is, a great is movie. super high for me like i i gave this the, the reason i gave him that whole system was because i think this is four and a half stars this is an a this is acting directing fun score very rewatchable very heartwarming a good share movie like yeah. i want to share this with people Same. everyone else has already seen it but right. uh here we are we caught up 32 <laughs> years later but uh let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of for us four and a half four and a half yeah definitely yeah. Absolute blast. Love this movie. Understand the appeal. Now going to look into all those character actors from the 80s and 90s. I was like, I know them. Uh, and there were so many. Like, I think that the the guy that was the expert on tires was in like ER or something. He looks super familiar. Anyway, exceptional film. Adored it. Joe Pesci. He's going places. Marissa Tomei is perfection. We just learned in real time. Please like this video. Please subscribe. Please let us know what else are blind spots you want us to watch next. Leave a comment below. Do you enjoy my cousin Vinny? I hope you do because it's an A for us. Much love, Reject Nation. We'll see you soon. David Gandy. My friend, David Gandy. This is a romantic month. It's the V month, my friend. Wow. It's a romantic month. Now, if I know you, (laughs) and believe me, I do know you. I do. I'm going to say don't enjoy this month of romance and love with another body. No. You enjoy it with God. Yeah. The way you want to. You take all that love and sexual tension, and you convert it to your love for God. Yeah, go out, you do know, what you want with it. Pray, reflect, uh, behold the majesty of His creation, and then you know maybe do some. We like, don't know God's pronouns. That's true. They're uh, God's God's creation. Don't just assume. So Doctor Who says. That's true. <laughs> I should be listening to the to the word of the doctor <laughs> most certainly, and that's a way in which you know you live much better than I do, David. You're an mm-hmm. inspiration to each and every one of us mm-hmm. to appreciate. Uh, you know, whoever, however God likes to be described, the creation, you know, brought forth, you know, and you are here to capture it. You are here to put it through your unique lens and prism, and we can all be inspired by that. I would love for you to sing a cover of, and if our God is for us, then who could (laughs) ever stop us? Yes, song? I don't know. That's a great song. There's some great Christian songs. Let's hear it. I just. I mean, it. I mean, give me the the CD. Or give me a, a, a link. CD. What can I burn me? May, uh, get me a mix cassette tape <laughs> so I can listen to it in my car <laughs> with the top down. That's good. I, I need to hear more Christian yeah. rock music. Or I Christian was born rock. again. Yeah. Is it heavy? Is it like Christian new metal? Have you never been to like a Christian church where they have like a rock group? You know, I I'm haven't. Not, I'm not a Christian. And I will tell you guys <laughs> that I, 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 I genuinely love the music and I get down with it. I have never been to rock and roll church. I, I should, they are I awesome. Go. I would love to see that. They're all, you get a good one like on, a, on holidays or a rich area. Uh, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Like it, Newport Beach. There's one in Newport Beach I went to once. Is it so fa- like it's like Bentleys in the in the oh in yeah. church parking uh, lot and stuff? <laughs> and, uh, it's a little bit of irony before yeah, you go into yeah, the ceremony. You know, they'd be tithing for tax write-offs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, they, God but, created but, all, and that man, includes the capitalist. But, but like the, the lights, 
the, the light show that happens with it, it, it is like a, a rock and roll. I'm not being uh, sarcastic. About it. Is, is like this awesome. the white people rock and roll equivalent of like a really passionate like Baptist ceremony or something like that, where it's just like everyone's really into it and it's yeah. like joyous and. Yeah, I mean, kind of. But, like, just with way more production value and money behind it. I've never been to a Baptist church. That sounds fun. My but idea then, of everyone I've seen in a movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and then also, you know, you could also learn more about love this month through, uh, I, I know sometimes, you know, a lot of these Christian speakers often get, like, a lot of flack for, you know, certain things they believe and say. But <laughs> once in a while, they say things that I'm like, hey, there's some good messages here. You know, there's some things that are really good. That's and, uh, true. and uh, you know, I, there's been, like, some nice messages I've heard from, like, Joel Austin and Joyce sure. Myers. Absolutely. You heard Joyce Myers? She's good. And, um, oh, my God, what is his name? Uh, John C. Maxwell. Sure. He's not like a – he's Christian. I think he's like a pastor or something, but uh, I've heard his talks on other things outside of that. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, there's a lot of ways you can find like some really good love. So all jokes aside, I'm saying this to say that I know religion is sensitive and I want to <laughs> <laughs> follow it up with. Don't worry. I really respect a lot about it. Actually. Absolutely. It, it absolutely. So it can inspire a lot of beauty. So go on a, a date with God world. this month, David. Yes. Re- leave room for the Holy Spirit. Take him out for free breakfast. Ooh. At, at, I meant to say breadsticks at Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Take him out for a breakfast of breadsticks at the Olive Garden. <laughs> Love you, buddy.